Well, hello, Coffee Time friends. How are you all? Let's talk. Let's talk about supper. We're going to have fried red tomatoes tonight. We have this. This is the first year we've not had it several times. Usually, but now, tomatoes are so plentiful, we've had them every which way we can. I'm going to put a little bit more uh, olive mm, avocado oil in my pan to get ready for my tomatoes. This is needs to heat up. I put about three tablespoons in there. Uh, we've got our cooker over here and here is the olive oil and it needs to heat up just a little bit more. I better get some in there heating. What are you up to mama? Nothing. Been breaking up my last mess of beans. Not peanuts are they? Yeah. Are they? Well there's a few of those other flat ones that's in there but you know. Someone they... asked me about finding peanut beans. Peanut beans are hard to find any year, but this year they're even harder because a lot of people just didn't have good luck with them. Now I'm just going to put a little bit of flour in here. This is just, I'm going to use this as a dredge. So let's call that a good t t tablespoon of flour. I'm going to put the cornmeal in here. I'm going to put probably half a cup. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it's just cornmeal little bit of flour and then some cornstarch just to hold it on yeah I thought there was something in there mama we need a scooper in there we've got Tupperware scoopers right here's a one eighth of a cup a teaspoon that'll work I just need a touch this is just enough cornstarch to hold that on my tomatoes. What are we making tonight? We're making fried red tomatoes. We make them, I think I did two videos of them last year. We did one video where we just had plain old fried red tomatoes. And then we did a video where we had uh, tomatoes with toppings. Cause I told y'all we could do toppings and someone asked me to show them. So we come right back and done another video, not long after the first one just to show the toppings. So we've been doing these for a long time. I think I've seen other people doing them. Um, so it's probably not just something we do, um, but we have done them for years. And uh, go back, just put in fried red tomatoes, I think, and it should bring up two or three videos from last year. We might've done them three times. So I'm just gonna stir all this in together. Cause you do want it to blend well so that you'll have um, good coverage. Let me show you all this down here. Mama, how's the beans coming? What, how many are you going to have? Are you going to have enough for a cannon? No, I've just got enough for a little mess. Just for a uh, so just the last little bit? Last little bit. Some of y'all was asking me yesterday about was the farmer's market. Mama, have you seen any peanut beans this year at the farmer's market? Uh, no, not no peanut beans. I heard one lady down there talking last week that she found a bushel and bought them, but I don't, I didn't hear where or how much. Uh -huh. They said there was, uh, my sister said there's a uh, 60, I believe $65 a bushel somebody Ooh, wow. over there. So that's I'm not gonna it. say they're not worth it, but I'm gonna say that's high. It is high. Uh, I think there's around 50 last year, but I think there's 65, she said this year over there. Ugh. But I've got plenty canned and- We got some from previous years. And I'm not to, and I canned some this year, so one can and a pints, and I just don't need any right. more. I wouldn't buy them to can them now. But they just didn't do well this year around here. Some people's done pretty good. It's just like some gardens done good and some didn't. I think the lady I was talking with last night was from Knoxville. And she said hers didn't do any good. And she was looking to buy some. Did our farmer's market have them? But I don't think ours had them even when it was before. Yeah. Peanut had white half runners. Yeah, now they had white half runners. Not a bushel, just like uh, bags. Uh, fixed out mm -hmm. and small, you know fix enough for a meal or cook, you know, if they didn't have no bushes down there. So now in this plate, what I put in here, while, while my mom was talking about <laughs> beans, is just plain old table pepper and salt, just out of the shakers. I put in some onion powder, and just do you, do how much you want. 
I put in a little bit of smoked paprika. This is going to be in the breading, so it's going to be flavoring. And I put in a little Italian seasoning. And I'm going to put a little parsley on top. I'll show you that in a minute. I've washed these tomatoes good, but I've not cleaned them yet. I'm going to get the knife out here. This is a quick process. Mom and I, we... Um, We'll eat three or four of these, and this is going to be supper. This is the whole meal. We don't usually have anything with this. This is like a tomato sandwich. Don't really need anything to go with it. It's so good by itself. Mama won't like that little end piece. Now, I don't care to eat that little end piece at I all. I never eat that. I just cut them. I always cut them off. And I just up. eat it. <laughs> now, on these, you want to cut these. A uh, fourth of an inch. I don't want them too small or too thin because they are ripe and they're not what they call dead ripe. But you want to cut them a little thicker than you probably would for a sandwich. You want them to be hearty, steak size. So in this pile of tomato, I've got four slices and I'm cutting them about that thick. Well, that's awful thick on that. About that thick. See there? About that thick. Probably half an inch. And I've just got a little buttermilk over here. And all I'm going to do is just lay this tomato in it on both sides. And then I'm going to come over here to my flour dredge. And I'm just going to cover them good. Just like this. This is just like you would do green tomatoes. Uh, no difference. Uh, last time I fixed these, people said, I've never heard of doing red tomatoes. I've... I think we've always done them, haven't we, Mama? Yeah. Um, I want yes, I know. I want to get it good and coated. And there it is. And you sprink, shake the excess off and put it in your hot oil. Now, see, that's hot and it's already starting to sizzle. Where I touched it there, I'm going to patch it. Patch it. And you just do that same process over and over. I like this. I'm just sitting observing. This is one of the things I normally do. Mama's got her things. I've got my things. And when it comes to this kind of stuff, Mama's usually says, I'll let you do that foolishness. I'm not getting involved in that. Don't you, Mama? Yeah. I've cut up mine. I'm not patient enough to do a lot of red tomatoes, fried green tomatoes. You do the fried green. Yeah. And that's what all you're going to do. Just keep repeating that same batter dredge process. And they're frying. They're doing a good job there. I can hear them sizzling. Can y'all hear them? No, because I'm just now probably hearing it. They're not on the... Are they on the burner? Yeah. Yeah, I think, aren't they? This pan is just big. Too big for that burner. We may have to switch it to the big, big burner over on the stove. Big burner on the stove. So it won't get to the edges. These are a great little appetizer. Like if you're having a, a dinner or something for two or three, you can make these up as an appetizer. Make you can even make a dip. Sometimes I make a chipotle dip or something like that to just to dip them in. Tonight we're just going to top them. I, mo I mostly do a dip if I'm not going to top them. Because sometimes we fix them and just, we don't top them. We just fix them like this. And then we're, we, we're through. Um, just like a green tomato. But uh, tonight we're going to top them. Uh, there's a bad spot on him. Get rid of that fella. Well, I'm going to just cut him That's off. That's what I say, get rid of that spot. Oops. Ooh, gonna have to get rid of way down in there. We talked about this the other day. It looked, well, I know it. Ah. We may just have to go to a whole new tomato, Mama. I may get one slice out of this, but he looks like he's rotten to the bone, as they say. It's not really rotted, it's just a spot. But I don't want to taste that. First, your nose. That's, I think we got down to the spot. See, the spot wasn't very big here, but it's still there. And we just don't want to try him. We might not. I might just stop at this. And if we want more, we'll do it. Because this will be... Well, I just miscut that one for sure. Um, 
Time I get through hatching it up, we might need another one. You think you're hatching it up? Well, I cut it and it come off the side a little bit. These tomatoes, some of these that we got, you don't know the origin of them. I think we may have got a hold of some hothouse tomatoes. But uh, this may be one of them. I know the ones that are homegrown. I didn't think we had any of those left. Well, this one appears to look bought, like one. Not bought none in two or three weeks. You know, we had some green ones. Uh oh, could have been a green one. Could have been a green one. Mm -hmm. So you just cover this dredge. You need to turn them. No, I was just going to get some oil over there. Kind of. Do I need more oil? Mm -hmm. No, it's just. I'm just trying to get it coated on the skillet. Put him right there in the middle. Mom, I agree with you. I believe we might have enough. Yeah. That's enough right there, I believe. Mm -hmm. Buttermilk and tomatoes. Who would have thought that combo would ever be on your supper table? But it's good, folks. I'm going to turn you all over that way. Just let you see the skillet. There they are, doing their thing. Right here, Mama. You feel already done? Yeah. Oh. That's, That's the reason I was asking if you wanted to turn. I was going to... I'm going to scoot them around a little bit so you have room to... Someone sent us that spatula, and I just love it. It came in a set of different... Uh, a spoon and some other stuff and we like it yeah. and it's quiet when you're doing stuff that little spot right there my thumb it's wanting to come out too easy yeah we've had rain today have y'all had rain we've had plenty of rain today um Kind of start out that way, and I think it's going to end that way. It looks like we're getting it's another getting one. Cloudy. Yep. I'll let you use your spatula now. Somebody's trying to get me on my phone. Or I hear your phone going wild in there, Mom. Ah, right. those need to fry a minute. I can go ahead and do these little pieces just and probably won't even try to top them. We'll probably just put them on the side just to keep from wasting. It's where the stem is and I don't want to waste these little pieces. They're good just fried in cornmeal like I'm doing here and not worry about toppings. You can make them flavored any way you want to. They're yours as I always say but you can make these taste as good as a pizza or you can make them uh, hot, you can make them mild, you can put jalapenos on them. There's just a world of goodness you can do. You, I didn't peel these, I don't peel them. Um, it kind of helps hold them together a little bit. But when you get them on your plate, you may want to remove the peel and if that bothers you, it don't bother me. But sometimes if you get the peeling hot, it gets kind of, mama says plasticky. Yeah, we got a whole handful here now, Mama. Yeah. We got plenty. I ain't gonna even, I ain't gonna cut that other tomato. No, no so what are y'all having for supper? Boy, right. Is anybody having red fried tomatoes tonight? Or is anybody saying, I can't believe you're frying red tomatoes? Who ever heard the beat? Well, you know, if you watch here long enough, you never might just see anything. <laughs> That's what we're up to, anyway. It's red, fried red tomatoes. Like I said, this year has been totally not our normal year. Um, with the things we fixed, the things we wanted, even. Uh, I don't know what, maybe age has changed us. I don't know what it is. Do you know? I've just not had luck with my garden well. I've not, I don't work in it like I used to hold up to it out in the heat. I can't well, I'm glad you kind of give up on some of that because it's hard. Um, it is hard. 
the breadings wouldn't come off these even with the cornstarch. That's what I said. It's maybe need a little more oil or something. Think? You think it's like an oil that's constant? Well, it's the dryer. Texas ain't dry where the bread is coming off. I tried to get rid of the rain. Normally, the bread will hold on better with the cornstarch. And who's to say it's probably holding on better tonight with the cornstarch? Then tell them what it would do if it didn't have it. Mama says it's not enough oil. We've been using a lot of avocado oil. It does have a smoke point of 500. Olive oil is good, but it smokes. It's a lot less of a smoke point. You can't cook really high or deep fry stuff like this with olive oil. We may just have red, bright, shiny red tomatoes and I'll have him bread down the way this is looking. As your daddy says, we'll dip it out and put it on it. It'll eat. It'll eat, You can get the gist of what they're supposed to look like. You can see there, they're, they got the breading on them and then I'm going to cover them in a minute. Mm-hmm. Now that one turned out good. See him? He's looking pretty good. Something about the humidity. There's all kinds of factors that can go into frying. Um, that one didn't hold on good at all, but the rest of them are doing a lot better. Now tomatoes are good. They're fine raw, so you know you don't have to worry about temping these or anything. Really you're just looking for that golden brown outer texture and then we're going to cook them a little bit longer anyway. That one's not going to be topped. Oh that one did good too. These little pieces I just stuck them in there but I'm going to roll them anyway. Now whatever oil you put in there it's going to eventually end up in your tomatoes. Same thing with potatoes or anything you put oil in, a skillet. Your food will absorb it up. So be be aware, you know, when you're adding oil, it's got to go somewhere and it'll absorb up in your food. So we're just going to let those set for a minute. Mama, hand me that rag back. I've got... We share a rag. We can't... We can't get out two at one time. I, sh I sold it, didn't I? You did. I didn't throw Sometimes Mama takes both of them. I didn't throw your bread in the way, just in case she had to have some more. Oil. Nah, I think we're good. We got two big ones, and we'll only eat a couple of them, so we don't want any leftovers. No leftovers. That's our motto, if we can. Because, so yeah. We don't want to waste the food, and we don't want to. We've got leftover we got, beef stew. we got leftover beef stew, and we're going to eat it. That's the only we had a big salad. Oh, that sounds good. Is that beef stew right there? Yeah. Get it out and let's look at it. I want to see if those tomato pepper cucumber salad for dinner. Oh, we like that. Mama likes it real well. Um, with ranch, is that how you do it? That's how Mama likes it, too. I haven't looked at the beef stew today, so we'll see it together. Here you go, sir. Okay, so we didn't put the potatoes in there, and we didn't put thickening in there. Somebody was saying last night that it would gel anyway because of the meat. We've never had that experience. Um, if I don't cook the potatoes in there, let's see what this did. I haven't looked, but... If I don't cook the potatoes in there, then my beef stew is not, yeah, right here. It's um, It almost looks like it's been warm, but it just came out of the refrigerator. So that's the difference between having your potatoes, cooking them in the pot and not. That au jus, or that drippings, that broth stays um, liquidy. It's a, maybe a little thicker, but once you heat it, it'll thin back out. But it, it's not that big jelly clump. Uh, now, I could eat that a second day. But when it's, I get in there and I have to cut it apart and then try to reliquify it, I'm already out of the notion of eating it. So 
that is the difference of having the potatoes cooked in there and those starches or not starches. All right, let's see. Basic tacos for me. I love basic tacos. I guess technically this is Taco Tuesday um, for a lot of folks. Taco Tuesday can be a real thing. Yeah, I was just showing them where we didn't put the potatoes. Okay, let's come back over here. It's time to top these. Mama, do you want some bacon on yours? No, sir. No, nothing to do with it. Mess me up tonight. And you just don't like this bacon stuff, do you? Well, um, the taste of it's all right, but it seems to bother me later on, and I don't like that. Because it's got a smoky something? Yeah, it's just... Huh, you're going to have to make some scissors or something, maybe. I, I have... I have resealed that bag when I tore it. How do you do that? I wish... Oh, there, that's... It's good. No, I'm going to cut it because... That may be a new pack, I love. This is a new pack. There, it's opened up nicely. So what I'm going to do is just... These are the real... They even say real bacon pieces. Just going to put some of the real bacon pieces on mine. Let me have... I'm going to give me one to taste this. See if it... Ooh. Yeah, I like that was yours, Mama. I saw that. You gonna put some on yours then? I'm gonna put bacon on those three, and I'll leave yeah, the rest of them. Put it on it. Put it on it. She says she can eat this. It's a first, folks. You've heard it here first tonight. Mama has come across with liking the bacon, so I'm just gonna put a little on all of them then, so they'll all be the same tonight. At this point, you can put a little hot sauce. You can put your jalapenos on here. I'm just adding these crumbled bacon pieces right on top here. And that's it. This is going to be super simple, folks. Super duper simple. If you have me the lid for the flour, I'll put this up. Oh, I've stowed your lid, Mama. There you go. Now, just for the contrast, and just because I like that sharp flavor, I'm going to put a little bit of cheddar on these and then I'm going to put a little bit of mozzarella see if I can open this bag without resealing it Now this mozzarella, I'm going to put it on there good. Mozzarella. No, I cleaned up my, my mess. I really didn't have too bad of a mess, Mama. Mm -hmm. I hadn't done too bad tonight. Not a lot of dishes anyway. No, I like that part. I did too. I finished breaking up. I'll finish whatever dishes we have here. And I'm going to use these little paper plates to steep tomatoes on. Yeah. That'll be great, Mama. Here you go. Thank you. Now, this is strictly for looks, but we eat with our eyes, so we want to present with our eyes. And this is just a little bit of parsley flakes. And I'm just going to shake, shake on here. Just like that. Oh, just to give it that pretty little green on there. Now, if we'd have left the cornmeal and that stuff off, these could be considered probably keto friendly or something. If you just put the cheese and hadn't breaded them, and I have made them that way before. Not worry about breading them. You got my rag again, Mama. See? See? If you you think you don't steal it, but when it's just me and you, we know who's the guilty party, don't we? Sometimes stuff will happen here, and Mama says, I didn't do that, and I said, I didn't either. <laughs> and we know one of us has Test forgotten. To do it. <laughs> <laughs> one of us has forgotten. Or I'm trying to blame it on Mama. What? Admit. <laughs> 
Okay. Have you got a lid for this? Oh, the big one? Yeah. Well, or just a lid. Just, just something to get that cheese to melt. It doesn't have to be the lid. I have these lids, but I'll I know you got, yeah. That'll work. No, that's good. Or just get that big skillet right there. That'll work. I know it'll work. Yes. Yeah. We're just going to trap some heat. Get it. Um, I love basil fried tomatoes. Basil is good on these. It, fit it, it will. Cause I'm Wait a minute. I'll get this other skillet. She don't think that will fit. That's a big pot. Oh, that's a bigger one. She's right. So we're just going to lay this on here. And all we're doing is creating a shield. Um, if you've ever worked in a restaurant, you know pie pans are often used for this same kind of thing because they're easy and you can sling them off and on the grill and uh, they work good. They make little dome things, but we always use pie pans back in the day because you just want to hold that heat in to melt that cheese. We've got you two of those dimes, <clears throat> but they ain't that big of one on this Right. So what are y'all eating again? Looks delicious. Uh, I thought I'd oh, get it freeze. Okay. Um, I'm going to try the ripe ones. Pat, they're easy, and they're just like the green ones, uh, and they're easy. Those tomatoes look yummy. Ginger, they are, and you can, you can literally, you can put hot on these. I have made them. I made them last year, and I showed you a bunch of different toppings. Um, in, um, you can put jalapenos on them. You can just have them plain. You can put um, hot sauce on them. You can put uh, shredded chicken on them or shredded pork or shredded beef. You can literally, you can put marinara sauce on them and then the cheese. You can really do a lot with these and have a ton of flavor. And you know, families, just the two of us here, and we differ a lot in our taste. So you may have a kid that loves marinara sauce, one that hates it, somebody who loves onions, somebody who hates them, these can all be uh, personalized. If you have older kids, they can make their own toppings, put them on there. Uh, or if you, you know, it's up to you what age of kid you want to use at the stove. But sometimes, you know, young kids, they don't want to be at the stove. But, um, yeah, you can, these are wonderful. These really are wonderful. That's just going you to know what I used to use for that? I couldn't think of it earlier. It's my pizza pans. Uh -huh. <laughs> I know that I kept trying to think what I usually put on. Mama, you're out of dishes to wash. Why don't you come over here and sit down with us? I'm coming. She sit wasn't down. trying to tell her, I bet you. No, I was drying my back hands. And I got parsley flakes in my plate. You got bacon in your <laughs> This is just some bacon crumbs. I didn't even taste that bacon more of a hammy, hammy taste than it is bacon taste, isn't it? It tastes good. Mama, you want some hot sauce for yours? Yes, oh, sir. You want hot sauce for yours? No, ma'am. It's good with mayo on them. Yes. Yes, it is. Mayo and a slice of cheese. It's like a grilled cheese with tomato. Uh, taco soup last week. Um, we had, we've had had taco soup in a long time. Um, We've not had tacos, you know, fixed either. And I bought some ground chuck. We can oh, you mean regular taco twos? Okay. Yeah, we need to fix us some. Well, of let's that try that. With some of that ground chuck, I bought. You think they're melted now, Mama? They should, pretty close to be. Good enough. We don't want it all running. Oh, they're right. perfection now. We don't want it all running, I thought. Oh, I know. Ooh, I about took my coffee. Oh, I would have cried probably. No, I just got me some more. <laughs> there they are, folks. Look how pretty. And that's supper, and that's easy. And delicious. And look how that cheese is melted, and you got that uh, cheddar underneath there. All right, Mama, you ready? Yeah, give me a slice. We'll do these big ones. Look at there, folks. Now, that's good. I don't care who you are. Well, might have a friend that wasn't gonna let go. <laughs> that cheese melted down and stuck. I'm gonna take this off the heat. Yeah, that will work. Turn it up. Oh, I'm gonna 
turned it off. You can unplug it right in there, Mama. Okay. Let me get down here. Hold on. There she be. And I'm going to flip that right around there and get it out of your plate. Okay. Now, look at there. You can eat and not have the hot plate in your plate. You're doing good. Let's bless this wonderful meal on this fine china tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful meal. We just pray for the nourishment of our bodies, dear Lord. And we just pray for our world and pray for our country, dear Lord. And pray for our leaders. And dear Lord, just watch with all those that are, be with all those that have prayer requests, those spoken and unspoken, dear Lord. We know that you know the best and you have the plan. And we'll trust you, dear Lord, to do that in your time, in your glory, and your honor. We pray. Amen. Amen. All right, Mama. Give it a whirl, girl. I'm going to show you all mine. Now, this is a paper plate kind of meal. Um, <laughs> then, since, you know, you're just going to eat a tomato or two. But that is delicious. It's some good eats right there for sure. And like I said, if you don't like this combo, make yours up. Make it up and tell me about it. I might want to try it. Anything with tomatoes, you'll usually try. I love tomatoes. I really do. And the fried red ones are just as good to me as the fried green ones. Let's have a bite. It's probably hot. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that cheese will stick to it and make it hotter. Mm-hmm. It was about too hot. Be careful, Mom. I know what I It was about Couldn't too hot it. to achieve. Couldn't taste it good for the hotness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think it's pretty with the cheese and the parsley. See, it's just dripping down. It's like pizza. And the bottom stayed didn't get too brown. It stayed nice. Can y'all see that? And it ended up staying on there pretty good. A little bit of um, cornstarch will hold whatever you're flouring, whether it's a, a vegetable or whether it's protein. It just holds, keeps it on there. Then a moment. It's too hot. Yeah, it's warm. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have anything to drink, Mama. Okay. Dr. Pepper to the rescue. Folks, this is a keeper. It's the cheese that keeps It's it. the cheese that gets, you know, like lava. Make it stay so hot it won't stick to you. It's good. Mm. Like, Very good. It's like eating a big slice of pizza almost. It is. With that, you got that Italian seasoning in there that I put in there with the mozzarella cheese. It's like eating a crustless pizza. And then you got the tomato for the tomato flavor. It's not keto because I dipped it in cornmeal and flour in that. But we're not on keto, but there are some good keto recipes out there that I've seen that was low sugar, low bread. And this is, you could make this keto easily, but it's very good. Looks yummy. I seen you grab that coffee junk. Yeah, it was a little hot. <laughs> you know it's hot when you're grabbing coffee to cool it down. That first bite was a little like lava, but it didn't burn my tongue or nothing. I mean, it didn't scald it, let's say. Mmm. That little bit of bacon. Now, if you want to fry bacon... And do all that, by all means do. And I have done that before and I have had it or if I have bacon left over. But if you don't have bacon left over, that real bacon to me tastes pretty good for... Um, I don't eat it on salads as much. But like I add it to omelets, I add it to tomatoes like this. I'll add it to something just to give it... If I'm making a tortilla pizza or something. You get the little bit of bacon flavor, but it's not all the process. And really, if I'm going to fry bacon... Then I think like I've defeated my purpose of a quick and easy supper. Because when you're eating at 7.30 at night, you really don't want a big full meal every night. Um, 
we do occasionally, but more on the weekends or on a Friday or something. When it's like if you don't sleep well and you have to get up, it's all right. Cat's cornbread with the stew last night was oh. really good because we hadn't had just cornbread in a while. That turned out real good. The beef stew was good. I don't care if it was 90 degrees yesterday. It didn't bother me last night. No. Nope. It was late. And it wasn't as hot as this tomato. No, it wasn't. <laughs> this tomato. That cheese is just kind of it's still molded hot in there. It's not hot as it was, but it's still good and warm. Oh, yeah. You have to wallow it around your mouth. Keep it burning before you chew on it. Mama, I'll be chew eating tonight. Usually you beat me. You can stand hot better than me. I have to let it. When you put your seasoning in the in the cornmeal and the flour like that, what it it you get it in every bite. If you sprinkle it on there, sometimes it's just more on one side than the other. But if you mix it in there well, then you're going to get it in every bite. So that cornmeal got a good crunch to it too. Do you want to know what I put in it again? I just put a little bit of onion powder, a little bit of smoked paprika, and a little bit, this is Italian season, in salt and pepper. Just table salt and pepper. And I put, um, fried it in avocado oil. Um, so that was, that's all we put in it. Then I topped it with a little bit of parsley once the cheese was on it. But uh, I recommend it. It's a great appetizer. If you if you serve appetizers with your meal, it's a great supper. If you make enough of them that you know to feed you, you could eat three slices of those and have a pretty good supper. Um, wouldn't be hard at all. Mm -mm. Um, Mama usually eats a couple. I don't know if this one's so big, whether I can get a cup or not. This is like eating a big piece of pizza. It is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We could make pizza with that, with a flour tortilla shell, and just put tomato on it, and just sort of... But you don't really need it. You get the bread, and if I did it flour tortilla, I wouldn't bread them. And you get a lot of flavor there. You can mix up a spice rub and just put on the tomato on the top once you fried the bottom. Just turn it and then put your spices on it and don't turn it again uh, that's what I meant to say fry it, turn it, season it if you don't flour it or put cornmeal let's see what you, we had a little earth oh, we're at Missouri 4.4 mm. I hope everything's okay uh, Diana Diana. Uh, we've, we've had several here lately uh, not, well I shouldn't say lately I mean, within the past two years seems like we've had more than we've ever had. We live on the thought line, don't we? Yeah. We, I, when I was a kid, I, we never heard of an earthquake. Um, didn't think about one here in East Tennessee. But here lately, in the past 10 years lately, it, we've had them occur, occur every once in a while. The last one we had was uh, the one that we really felt, and it kind of shook the pictures and stuff, was in uh, 2019. Um, looks so yummy gotta try this recipe. Michelle you won't be disappointed uh, the only requirement is if you like tomatoes if you like tomatoes you can do anything with the flavor on them you want to hello Shirley Brown hey Tammy hey Emily Thomas I've never had tomatoes fried like that they are so good uh, a lot of people around here have had fried green tomatoes it's the fried red th tomatoes that throw them a little bit uh, now I showed you a lot of other toppings in the last video I done on them I think it was last year, maybe the year before. Just put in fried red tomatoes and it should pop up two or three videos from last year on it. Maybe maybe one from the year before. Where I showed you different toppings. And then I showed you just with no toppings. Um, we have, we used to do them mostly with no toppings. We would just bread them just like we do green ones. And we just have fried red tomatoes. And then I put cheese on them once and it just sort of grew from there. Uh, good evening from Illinois. Hey, Lisa, how's it going in Illinois? Hello from Cambridge. Uh, is that Missouri or am I? I can't see. My eyes don't. 
Aloe fried green tomatoes. Christy, we do too. Um, now, if I do fried green tomatoes, I've never done fried green tomatoes with toppings on them, but I think it would be good. Most of the time I use those, I, we make up a, either a ranch-based sauce uh, or put a little bit of hot sauce in it, or we'll make up a chipotle sauce or a, um, something, you know, something like that that we could dip it in. I made Mama's egg salad. Turned out really good. Thanks. Well, thank you. Thank you. Michelle, it's simple and easy, and it's just the basics, but it is good. Uh, had both red and green fried, and like them. Uh, who said that? D. Snow? Yeah, it is good. It really is. Um, Cave City, Kentucky. Hello, Linda. Drop us a note. Tell us where you're from. I did want to mention a post that I seen last night. Now, folks... I'm not, I don't want to get into the negative, but this person had written and said that um, we were just trying to trick you all into making comments that had nothing to do with Facebook's algorithm. I heard that from a seminar that I watched that showed different things to do to help your people on your page if they were having problems with Facebook and stuff. Um, we're not going to lie to you about anything like that, but there's no tricks here. And I don't, you know, um, I don't know where that person came up with the idea, but we're not telling you that it just gets you to comment. If it doesn't help your algorithm, it doesn't, it doesn't help us. I mean, we want you to, if you're having trouble getting notifications, I have been told by more than one person that it's because Facebook doesn't think you're interested in the page anymore, so they move it down in your list. When you comment, it goes back up to the top, as in this is something they've commented on. I know I have followed pages for years and then if I don't comment on them or like or share them or anything, I really have no interaction with them except watching them and I think I've not seen that in two or three days or a week or a month or I forget about it. And then I go back and look and I'm still following it but it's not in my algorithm. But don't ever think we're going to tell you something to trick you or I just didn't appreciate someone making that statement that we were lying about it because we're not going to lie to you about nothing on here. Trust me, Facebook. If it do, it's accidentally. We, we may say that. something wrong innocently, but we're not going to deliberately try to do anything like that. Because to me, Facebook and all this isn't worth lying about. Uh, that's no. just not what we do. Uh, you can never, my daddy used to tell me, if you lie once, you'll have to tell another lie to get out of that one. And I know the lie to get out of that one. Before long, you don't even know the truth because all you got is lies. So, uh, if that's not the case, I apologize. That's what I've been told uh, by people who are in the know or people who know more about it than I do. Because, as you all know, I'm not a techno person. But uh, the seminar that I watched online said that that was one of the things that people uh, encourage your people to make comments so it'll come up in their notifications. So that's the only reason we was doing that. So uh, I just wouldn't want it out there for any of y'all to read that comment and think um, that we were lying and trying to trick you in any way because we're not. No. Alright mama, what else is going on? Anything else we need to talk about? Not that I know of. I'm cool. Well, I ate lunch later, and that had a lot on it, a lot of cheese and everything. That's good. Yeah, I'm going to get one more tomato, and then we'll, well, we won't want many leftovers. That was just a small tomato, and you all seen, um, I cut off most of the other one, so it's just a small tomato and a half of a larger one, and we got these beautiful tomatoes. Look at that. Now that's, that is some good eats right there, folks. Um, what else was we going on? Oh, Tupperware ends tomorrow. Month is over for Tupperware. Tomorrow, the month is over for everybody tomorrow. But Tupperware is always the last Wednesday of the month, whether it's the last day or not. So, tomorrow ends August. We wrap it up. Then we go into the burrs. The four burrs. Yeah. September, the October, the November, and the December. And the burr months are fast and furious and full of entertainment. Because you've got Halloween, you've got December, November, you've got all those activities. And the holidays and the cookings and the parties and 
Whoo, we're going to be busy, folks. But we enjoy that. Everybody likes the holiday season. But it seems like it came around quick this year. Yeah. Um, it just seems like it really came around quick. But we enjoy it. I think tomorrow's Mike's birthday, and he's getting out of the hospital today, I reckon. That's so mama's. He, that's my uncle. Uh, that's a, a great birthday present. Mm -hmm. I said getting out of the hospital. Good things happening. I want to say hello, a special hello to one of our um, friends out there. Uh, his name's Nate, and he loves Halloween. He's already getting ready for it. And uh, he sent a little message the other day, and he said, uh, Happy Halloween, John. I think he called me Haunted John, because he's into the Halloween. So, Nate, happy Halloween to you. I hope this is a wonderful Halloween time, and I hope you really, really enjoy it. So, uh, his mama sent that video and he said, Happy Halloween, Haunted John. And I thought, I've got to wish him Happy Halloween back. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Happy Halloween, Nate. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you have a great time. Um, Halloween will be here in just a minute, folks. September will roll through. And uh, some of y'all are going to have a long weekend this weekend, I'm sure, with Labor Day coming up. Some of y'all didn't have to go back to school to after Labor Day, so it may be a sad time. Getting ready to get back in school. When I was growing up, we never went before Labor Day. It was usually after Labor Day. Mm -hmm. We never did start before Labor Day. I remember one year we, when I've been in school, that we went after Labor Day. Always before we were in school, way before Labor Day. Yeah. There's Maggie. Maggie's feeling much better. Some of y'all was worried about Maggie. I do not think she got up one time last night. No, I didn't hear her any. Um, she, I think she snoozed every time I looked over at her. She was snoozing, snoozing one time. I looked over and she had her head out of her bed. She has a, one of those, uh, it's got a wall around it, you know, the little, it's made out of like cheap wool or something, but she cheap had her, skin, like her whatever, shine. yeah. She had her head laid out like this and I thought, I'm assuming you're comfortable or you wouldn't be laying that way. But she's just enjoying her sleep. She's felt better today, and she's doing better. And she's not even trying to eat any grass or anything. Uh, so I'm feeling good about her, and she's eating good and drinking good. Oh, yeah. She never has gone off her food, which is the A first sign time. of her not feeling good. So I wasn't terribly upset, but I was. You know, anytime she's not having a good day, I worry about her a little bit. I was trying to figure out how old she is. We didn't get her as a puppy. We got her as a rescue, and I think... I think. We heard different stories. She was from five to seven. I think she's something. around 12. So she's getting older, but we're going to try to keep her around 12 more years if we can. <laughs> uh, but you all uh, have a great evening. Mama, it's just 10 to 8. This is Ooh. early. Ooh, it was what, last night? Eight thirty nine when we yeah. ate. It it's was kind of late. It's still daylight, and it's even cloudy out there like it's going to rain. So we'll see. Somebody had a message there. Let's see what that says. I enjoy the Burr Months. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Shirley, those are my favorite too. Now, a lot of y'all are going to, I mean, some of y'all may get upset, but I like the winter months. I like the cold months. I like the, I even like the dark, darker earlier in the evening. He likes the mountains with no leaves on the trees. I love a, I love a tree with no leaves on it in the winter and you can look up at the sky and you can see shapes and form the silhouette of the trees against the sky is a beautiful thing for for fall late winter um sometimes we get locked into public opinion people will tell you i love fall for the beautiful colors um i like winter because it's christmas and i like summer because it's a there is something in every season to look forward to and enjoy and to love. Now, I'll be the first to admit I'm ready for spring. When spring comes, I get spring fever early. I'm ready for those beautiful flowers and the green grass and everything to come back to life. I love that time, that renewal, that freshness. And all the different shades of greens. And I love the colors spring. of spring. The When the leaves start coming on in the mountains, some of them come on lime green some of them come on dark green some of them come on different shades of beautiful greens looks like a artist has dabbled to the whole mountains with his paintbrush of different colors uh, a lot of people don't even think of the beautiful colors of spring 
but they're beautiful. Uh, I love summer. I love red tomatoes. Y'all know how much I love red tomatoes. Um, <clears throat> I like garden food. I like the fresh food. I love the farmer's markets. I love the longer days. I enjoy, you know, people being able to get out and go. I love going to the park. Um, all those things I love about summer. I don't like the bugs and I don't like the heat. Too much heat. Um, I love fall for the beautiful colors. Uh, then after fall, you go into November, which has got, which most of November is fall, but you've got Thanksgiving to look forward to. You've got family and friends. And then at Christmas, you've got the Christmas decorations to look forward to. You've got events and parties and Christmas cookies. And the outside offers you snow. There's nothing more beautiful, even if you don't like snow. There's nothing more beautiful than a fresh fallen snow and that mantle of white and everything's covered and everything's quiet. That quiet it's snow. It's beautiful. I love snow at night when the moon is flickering off from it. I love it early in the morning when the sun comes up through the trees and it's making it look like everything's been dusted with diamond dust. It is beautiful. I love red cardinals landing in the snow. You have those beautiful red birds and that beautiful white snow. I enjoy that so much. Then I'm ready for spring again. It's just a beautiful cycle of God's beauty and things to enjoy and beauty to behold. There's no sense in letting yourself get into that mindset, oh, I'm dreading winter, I'm dreading the... Folks, don't spend your good days dreading days you don't like as well. Just find something in those days and say, well, I look forward to that. Some of you all enjoy sitting out on the porch in the summer, in the spring, in the fall. Maybe in the winter you can enjoy sitting by a fire reading a book. Um, that I love. <laughs> I do too. Uh, so there's always something, something in every season to enjoy. And seasons only last 90 days. That's all a season is. 90 days. So that ain't that bad. That ain't that bad. The reason yeah. summer goes by so quickly. It's not six months. A lot of people think summer's half the year. It's not, folks, really. It's just about 90 days. They're all right around 90 days. But we enjoy them all. We love them all. So if you all uh, don't have any things, am I getting questions? Uh, yes, something in every season. It's wonderful. And some of y'all don't even have seasons. We're talking to some of you folks that just have mild weather and colder weather and hotter weather. Uh, that's a blessing, too. you got some stability there. You don't have to worry about plants and stuff like we do. Now, we'll start fretting over plants in a, maybe three weeks from now. But Mom and I pretty well live by the code of, unless it's extremely early frost or in the spring we get a late, late frost, the plants are just going to have to be on their own. They have a season. And uh, when the winter hits, you might delay it a day or two, but there's another frost behind that one here. So we usually don't cover up a lot of stuff. We just, whatever happens, happens with them. Because that's, that's the just circle of that's life. the circle of life, as Mama says. Um, so that's why we work on that. Um, and then we'll decorate for fall where them dead plants where them dead plants were in pots mom will stick a pumpkin in them there'll be something in there bright and shiny won't there mom yeah or fall leaves or some fall leaves or just some uh sometimes she takes her pots and puts a straw in them and sets a pumpkin and then a pumpkin on top of that um there's always some little something oh, you can do my two little white pumpkins out there i didn't get them I was leaving him on there to grow, and he cut hay today. You didn't know that, did you? No. He cut hay, and so my pumpkins are gone. I went to savage them, and they're cut. So, goodbye to little white pumpkin. The pumpkin three. crop went the way of the bean crop. Mom, you're the most popular person tonight. I don't know, I don't know why. I'm getting messages. And Who are you getting messages from, Mama? You know, I don't know. <laughs> Probably from church or your ladies one. Mama gets on group text sometimes. Who had a test today? I don't know, Mama. I'll read them to you. <laughs> Mama's not the greatest texture. Don't she don't care. answer. She but she's on the groups. Um, that's it's just somebody good... from church because she's thanking her for all the prayers. Okay, that's it's about that time. 
folks, if you all don't have any questions, I haven't seen any. We're talking about seasons. Um, we're going to go and we're going to say have a blessed night. Enjoy. We've got a little bit left of this evening. Y'all can enjoy and uh, sleep well. Wake up in the morning renewed, refreshed. It's a brand new day, brand new start. And enjoy your Wednesday. Uh, we'll be back on, uh, Lord willing, tomorrow sometime. Uh, before church it may be after church I don't know it's however it works out with my crazy work schedule it's until we're, what time we'll be doing whatever yeah they know that eating at 9 o'clock <laughs> I can wait to see that was time. a Saturday Bob but that wouldn't even work that was just crazy oh that's where you had so many meetings <laughs> yeah, that was place. COVID has passed meetings are back if you're in any kind of community organizations or activities it seems like they're all back in full swing and we're enjoying it, but it does bring on some more obligations sometimes. Mama, say good night. Good night, Mama, and God bless you all. Have a wonderful night. Bye bye. Y'all have a blessed one.